everyone. I'm Nyla Boodoo, host of the Axios podcast, One Big Thing. And we have made it to our final day of programming here at Axios House in Davos at the World Economic Forum. And to wrap things all up, it's the perfect person to be here with us, Axios' chief technology correspondent, Ina Freed. Hey, Ina. Hey, Nyla. Great to be here in person. I know. Normally, we have these podcast remote conversations. Totally. So, Ina, you are a veteran of WEF and Davos. What is different about AI in the conversation this year? So AI was the talk of Davos last year, but it was such a different conversation. Last year, it was a bunch of CEOs enamored with the fact that ChatGPT could write their speech as well as they could. This year, it's a much more nuanced conversation. It's businesses, wherever they are in this AI journey, trying to figure out how does AI change what it is they do. And for many companies, it's going to be a lot. And so do you feel like this year the focus is on actually doing something rather than talking about it? It depends where a company is in that journey. So I heard from companies that are really just learning and Accenture did this smart thing. They ran a boot camp for C-suite execs to learn what it is they need to do. And many, many businesses are in that camp. I also heard from other businesses that are really making use of the technology today that have different kinds of customized chatbots, not chat GPT, but things trained on their data that they're using every day as part of their work and seeing big gains. So there's definitely a wide range, but I think it is a different conversation. You know, as you started to highlight, there's so much of a cultural shift that needs to happen around artificial intelligence. Can you talk about what you're seeing there? Yeah. I mean, so often with technology, We have to change to adapt to the technology, and that's going to be true this time. But there is a real difference from all the other waves of tech I've covered. When you talk about a PC or the internet or a smartphone, they didn't have values baked in. Certainly, there are websites that have values, there are apps that have values, but the technology itself really, for the most part, was was pretty value agnostic. What's different with generative AI is inherently there are values layered on top. So you have the training data, which exposes biases and has some amount of values. But then there's this thing called alignment where you tell it how to respond on, you know, anything from was the 2020 election rigged to LGBTQ issues to, you know, what's the best of whatever the thing is. Those are all value judgments, some much more important than others. And right now, we basically have one OpenAI GPT that's serving most of the non-China world. And one of the questions I asked Sam Altman when we were on stage is, how much are you willing to change the answer based on what a culture demands? And I think that's one conversation we're going to have. And the other is, what does it mean that humans are now going to be creating, co-creating with AI? AI is writing music. I was at this panel with... uh, Sting and Will I Am and Jane Goodall, and it was a great conversation around what the technology can and can't do. You know, I wanted to ask you one last question about Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, was here at Axios House in conversation with you yesterday. What stood out to you? What um, did he say that's sort of reflective of what we're talking about? Big takeaways? One thing I've noticed that's a change in the way he talks about it is there's this notion of AGI, artificial general intelligence. When are the computers just smarter than humans at a wide range of tasks? That's certainly coming. I've heard different answers. Part of it is we don't really agree on what defines AGI, but I get the sense it's coming sooner rather than later. And one of the reasons is I heard Sam say a couple times here in Davos that um, it's going to come, we're all going to freak out for a couple weeks, and then it's not immediately going to change the way we live right away, that it, that change is going to be slower because it's the humans that are slower, even when the computers are that powerful. Well, when it comes, I imagine you will be the first to tell us about it. So everyone <laughs> needs to make sure they're following and reading. Axios is Ina Freed. Thank you for being with us, Ina. Thanks, Nyla. And thanks to all of you for joining us for our coverage of Axios House here in Davos. You can find more on our social pages as well as axios.com. Welcome back to The Promenade. I'm Nicholas Johnson, the publisher of Axios. I'm here with Qualcomm Senior Vice President for Government Affairs, Wasim Shrabaji. Wasim, welcome. Uh, Thank you very much. Tell me about your week. What's been the most exciting things? Oh, what a week. Like, it's a big week. It has been a very exciting. I mean, this is the right place to have the right conversation when it comes to technology, how it's transforming the economy, and what kind of policies and regulation we need to put in place in order to make it happen in a way that's like, which is good for people, good for the economy, and good for enterprises. 
Let's go a little bit deeper. What are the regulatory uh, topics that are hot on the promenade that you've been hearing about that you're excited about? So first, semiconductors, obviously, right? So sem semiconductors is the base, is the heart of the digital economy. So how you make the supply chain more resilient, more secure, that's one, one item. The other item is obviously Gen AI, generative AI. This is a big theme. How do you regulate AI? How do you to make it more sustainable? How to democratize AI? That's the conversation we're having here. We cannot have a conversation on the promenade on Davos without talking about AI. So I'd love to go a little bit deeper on that. Do you get a sense that regulatory agencies here are starting to figure out what they need to do? Or are we still a little bit too early for them to understand what comes next? It, they're getting there. It's a new technology. Everybody's trying to figure out. But it's a technology that will change a lot of things and will impact the economy, as I said. And I think there are things we all agree on. We need the technology to be sustainable. We need the technology to be good for people, to be human centric. So how to achieve that? That's the kind of conversation. So you have companies coming, sharing perspective. I mean, governments are very open to try to understand, but we are also, as a company, as a technology company, we need to be responsible. We need to develop the technology in a way that's positive because trust is key. And the technology will only adopt it if it is trustworthy. Are you optimistic that regulatory agencies will be the right partners this time around for AI to build that trust? I'm very optimistic. Like I've been in this uh, area for 20 years at the intersection of technology and regulation. And I really think this is an area where governments are open to understand and want to regulate in the right way. Another thing, like when we talk about AI, obviously there are the models, I mean, sustainability, etc. But openness, openness is a key item. If you think about how you interact with your devices and these devices become more intelligent, more capable, how to make sure a startup can still innovate and get to you as a consumer. This is about openness, about interoperability, and this is something we care about and we're discussing with governments. It's a tremendous optimistic note to end the week on, but we like to end on one fun Davos thing. How's your week been? Tell me something cool that you experienced here. Yeah, yeah. like the week has been very intense. I think our nightcap was like the fun thing. We, we ended at four in the morning. We had really great conversation. But what's really nice about it is that you meet people you haven't met for a year and you have these kind of conversation over a relaxed, in a relaxed environment. So really, really great stuff. Tremendous week. Hope you get some sleep. Uh, thanks for being here all week. Hope to see you again next year.